So the question of Syria and climate change has been in the news again this week. And this is partly a result of a new paper that has been published in the last week or so and some newspaper stories about that article. The links to that article are in the comments below if you want to check the original out yourself and I strongly recommend that you do. The paper that has been published recently is very critical of the way that some of the media have reported on the issue of Syria and climate change. And really what the authors of this paper are doing are taking a lot of what they see as very kind of overblown media reporting on Syria and climate change and critiquing it. The conclusion that they reach in their findings is that actually there is not any link, any real link, between the climate change impacts and the start of the Syrian conflict. Now, in the past, we've done quite a lot of work on Syria and climate change too. And what I wanted to try and do now is to look at what this new research says and compare that with some of the analysis that we have. Now, the new research really completely attempts to throw out the idea of a climate change connection to the Syrian conflict. And in doing this, it's my view that they have probably gone a little bit too far. They're certainly correct that the media in many ways made too much of the connections between climate change and the start of the conflict. And they're also correct that when the media were trying to explain the connections between climate change and the start of the Syrian conflict, they often got it wrong. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we should throw the whole lot out. It doesn't necessarily mean that we can completely dismiss the role of climate change in the beginning of the armed violence in Syria. So what I want to try and do is unpick a bit, if that's possible, exactly what the role of climate change is. Now, what I'm not going to try and do here is make a case for, the, for climate change having a very, very powerful role in the start of the conflict. I don't think that's true. But nonetheless, regardless of the size of the role, regardless of its importance, it's still vital that we get that role right even if it didn't play a very strong element in the beginning of the violence, it is still important that when we are talking about it, we explain that role correctly. So what I'm going to do first is say roughly what the media said. And bear in mind that this exploded as a media story really in 2015, the middle of 2015, um, when some new research came out pointing to this role of climate change in the start of the violence. So here is what the media said. They started by saying that the conflict in Syria was preceded by a long and powerful drought. Now that's true. Then the next part of their story is that that drought destroyed rural livelihoods and drove people from the Syrian countryside into Syria's cities. Now that's also true. And we know that partly because we know it from first-hand accounts of what happened in Syria at the time, but also this is a very common pattern. It's frequently, frequently the case that when drought strikes countries that have uh, populations, rural populations that are highly dependent on agriculture, when those rural agricultural livelihoods are destroyed by drought, people head for the cities. They abandon their rural existence and they head to the nearest available city, usually with the hope of finding work, firstly to replace the lost income, but also with the hope of sending money back to the rural area that they've come from to support the family, to support the household that they've left. So I think there's a very strong case for arguing that in Syria, as a result of that drought, people did leave rural areas and head to Syria's cities. Now, the next thing that the media say, and this I'm going to argue is where they start to go wrong. The next thing that they say is that when Syria's rural population met with Syria's urban population in the cities, they ended up in some kind of urban resource war. Now this is where it gets a bit sketchy. What a lot of the media coverage suggested, or what it kind of left to the reader's imagination, was the idea that rural and urban Syrians fought each other over scarce resources. So the media essentially presented the start of the Syrian conflict when it was talking about the connections with climate change at any rate as an urban resource war between rural and urban Syrians taking place in Syria's cities and then spreading across the country. 
What I want to do is present a different version of events that still has a role for climate change, but does not follow this narrative that I've just sketched out as it was presented by the media. This version of events sees a very important role for climate change, but also a very different role. It also sees a very different role for migration, and crucially, a different role for Syria's rural to urban migrants. It's still the case that climate change made the drought Syria experienced more severe and longer lasting. In many respects, the media was right about this. They are also correct to state that the effect of this drought was to drive people from Syria's rural areas into Syria's cities. However, there were also other reasons for people to leave Syria's cities. The Syrian regime had taken a number of disastrous decisions when trying to manage the drought, and more widely about the management of agriculture in Syria. These decisions, along with the drought, had pushed many rural Syrians into extreme levels of poverty, and they saw the actions of the regime as key to their suffering. This meant that when they arrived in Syria's cities, many rural Syrians were ready and willing to take part in attempts to overthrow the regime. The same was true of many of Syria's urban residents. Although they hadn't been affected by drought in the same way, they had still suffered at the hands of the regime, and many were also ready to take part in an uprising. The Syrian regime over the years had gone to great lengths to keep different aspects of Syrian society separate. This was part of a wider strategy to hang on to power. The regime knew that the forming of bonds and social networks across different parts of Syrian society could well lead to its own end. The huge levels of rural to urban migration had exactly this effect. Rural and, rural and urban migrants came together in ways that they hadn't done before. They exchanged ideas, they met, and they shared their grievances about the regime. This hadn't happened for decades because the Syrian government had gone to great lengths to make sure that they didn't meet up in this kind of way. The increased numbers in Syria's cities meant that the protests against the regime had the energy to turn into a full-blown uprising. So without the rural to urban migrants, the numbers simply may not have been there for a purely urban uprising to take hold. Now, that attempt to overthrow the regime was not successful. However, the regime's attempt to crush the uprising was not completely successful either. In fact, it turned out that the power of both the uprising and the regime was matched in a way that just left them fighting each other more continuously. And as the violence escalated, various other groups stepped into the power vacuum that had been created. This led to the spread of violence across Syria and also to the escalation of the conflict. So what you can see here is that I have mapped out a way in which climate change still plays a role in the genesis of the Syrian conflict, but it is not through creating an urban resource war. And crucially, it paints migrants, rural to urban migrants, in a very different light. In the media version of events, Syrians, and especially Syrian migrants from the countryside, are seen as a source of violence and chaos. However, in this version, which I think you know, bears more relation to the facts, rather than being a source of violence and chaos, rural and urban Syrians actually come together, partly as a result of the drought, which has forced the rural Syrians to move, but they actually come together in an act of cooperation, an act of solidarity, in an attempt to overthrow the Syrian regime. So, firstly, this is a more accurate way of viewing climate change as a driving force of the Syrian conflict, but it's also a different way, and I think a better way, of viewing the role of migrants, and especially of migrants from rural to urban Syria. So, if we return now to the new research paper, link in the comments below, as I said, um, what we can say is that this research paper, I think, was correct in trying to dispense with the media version of events. It was correct in its analysis when it says that the way the media portrayed the role of climate change in the Syrian conflict was wrong. I think they've got that right. However, I think there is still a strong case to be made for climate change playing a rather different but still important role in the beginning of the Syrian conflict. We'll be looking at another new research paper in our next live stream, which will be next week.